Okay, so some announcements first. Announcement number one. I am ending the Jeremiah study effective immediately for the main reason that it is super boring and long. Jeremiah study? Yeah. We aren't going to be looking at Jeremiah anymore. Mm -hmm. It's boring and long. I mean, you guys all agree with me, right? I guess, yeah. There's not, is there like nothing really any important? Really important. Um, well, no, there's lots of important stuff, but the thing is, in a young adult setting, um, a, a long Bible study like that really doesn't work best. Yeah. Young adults typically favor smaller, shorter things and things that are more, um, it, it catch their attention by, you know, intellectual thought. Yeah. And a Bible study just isn't, isn't that. The reason why we did it is because there was someone who was wanting to. Um, I'll bore, I'll save you the boring details, but there was someone who's just wanting to uh, do a Bible study, and so I started doing it. Then they stopped coming. <laughs> super uh, super awesome there. <laughs> so it just kind of became one of those things where I was doing it every single week, and obviously everybody was getting super super bored about it. Like it was very obvious, and I was trying to you know Where keep it up. <laughs> I was I was trying to keep you know keep it going. I was trying to keep it focused. All these different things. It's just. Obviously, was not working. People like that, for instance, choking to death. Um, and when that kind of stuff happens, it's probably best just go ahead and call it out for what it is. So, uh, what will we be doing in the meantime? Um, I am not entirely sure. I think we're not going to start anything that's like a series. I think we're just going to do um, shorter kind of devotional things or um, a short topic to study or some, or look at and discuss and stuff like every week because I don't really want to get into something with this. Um, yams will be ending forever because I'm moving. So obviously it'll be going away the I, way the dodo bird. bird. I noticed that all the, a lot of times. Well, the younger like kids like my age and all stuff, uh, whenever like we do long lessons, I think anything past 30 minutes. Mm, I don't think anything past 15 minutes. <laughs> like, well, no, because like, yeah. I, think, I think the highest, when I feel like we're going, 40, 50 minutes in, I'm like, you know, like, and then after, like, 50 minutes, almost after, like, yeah. still getting close to an hour, is when, like, my, my focus, like, my attention yeah. span just goes down for some reason. No, no it, it happens to everybody. And the thing is, if you're going to have a lesson that long, it has to be broken up by something, like, yeah. discussions well, then, or videos I, or something. I think that whenever there's a long lesson like that, you don't get the full comprehension. You forget, yeah. like, small parts, like... Like, you'll go, and like, oh, and then I'll forget what happened there right. because it's such a long lesson. Right, it's better to just focus on one thing. Because we get, you get it, you get more of the information. Right, and so that's what I think we're going to be doing for the remaining remainder yams. So the, what is, what is going to look like in the future? Yams will either be canceled because I'll be out of town, or um, we'll, be have, we'll be meeting, but we'll just have a short kind of thing, maybe 10, 15 minutes long, and then we're just that's just how we're going to do. We're not going to start a major series or anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, any questions on that? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So, uh, I wanted to um, just real briefly. Um, this is what we're looking at tonight: is the idea of okay. So, how do you move forward from here? If there's not going to be a yams or anything like that, which means that for a lot of people, there won't be a service that they're going to, except for maybe on a, on a maybe the weekend, and who knows how long that's kept that'll keep up. Um, because I mean, all you guys will be out are currently out of uh, youth, you know, uh, and then m most of you guys don't go to to Sunday services. You two do. I do. Yeah, I know you two do, but um, uh, the other well, the other ones are kind of a hit and miss, you know, eh, probably a couple month month and a half, uh, a week, and then that one uh, probably about like. Uh, five weeks so either way you get what i'm saying it's a hit and miss. yeah so how do you move forward from here well there's a few things first off ask yourself the hard questions and be willing to do this um so some of the hard questions that i i think of is what is the meaning of my life what is the meaning of what i'm doing what does it matter that i lived you know it, when i look at my life is there is there is there re does it does it even matter that i existed at all uh, when my strength fails, who or what do I turn to? Uh, these are just some of the things that, that I would consider hard questions, things that are uncomfortable to ask, but they're things that it's necessary to move forward if you just like real with yourself. Um, number two, stay in church. Uh, 
so many times we get this idea it's kind of like this this slow process and i'm going to mention that in just a second but we kind of get this idea where we just so let's start getting out of stuff oh, i don't have to go to church every week yeah yeah it starts like okay when we're younger for instance it's like i'm going to be in church like two or three times a week and it's like ah one once a week is fine then we get to a point where it's like eh, if i miss every, like it doesn't really matter that that much you know i've heard a lot of people say Oh well, going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Or going to right. Church and like, or reading your Bible, you don't have to read your Bible to be a Christian. Because right. It helps. It certainly helps. It's like, it's like. Well, not just that, but the Bible actually, God actually specifically commanded for Christians to go to church. Mm-hmm. So, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, like, no, not to be saved initially, but you do have to obey God when you're saved. Like it's like, it's <laughs> so. like, you get, like a cut, like a bad cut. Like you can put a bandaid on it. Like yeah, it may help, but going to a hospital may be better like it's right better. so uh next up besides that uh would be read read the bible and pray you know i i'm amazed at um how much i've changed when when i was a kid i had all these questions that were never answered so i went to college and i started studying you know a lot and i started learning all kinds of stuff and, and then i got to a point unfortunately where i felt like i knew everything so i felt like where i read the bible i already know everything and so then I stopped reading the Bible, and my attitude obviously changed because uh, that's what happens. And uh, there's a lot of study that backs that up. You know the effects of reading the Bible on your and your and your and your um, thought life, but also in your actions. And um, so then I got to a point, which is at the point that I'm at now, where I realized that it, there's there's too much that I need to learn and not enough time to learn it in. Like my life just isn't that long. So I, I I've gotten where I try to read a bunch of stuff. You know, like, uh, for instance, I'm reading Deuteronomy, Proverbs, and um, uh, the Minor Prophets. The Minor Prophet I'm in right now is Micah. But uh, I'm reading them all like that because there's just so much to learn. And they're just, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, to Proverbs, for instance, talks about the way that the Proverbs will help you in knowing how to make decisions in life. And it will help you with being wise and not get it, not falling into common traps like adultery and all these different, different things. And it's like... So I need to know these things in order to keep myself from getting into bad bad spots. It's like there's so much studying to do. And I, I feel like that's probably a good place to be in. Everyone thinks that they are on good terms with God. Everything is fine, but we gradually get to a bad place. It's not something that happens overnight. And I think that's the reason why we get to a bad place. Because if you saw yourself getting into a bad place, you'd say, Hey, I need to get my act together. But nobody ever actually sees it. So, you know, one of the things that I do to test myself, and I'll tell them so you guys can do a little evaluations on yourself too. In church, are you on your phone or paying attention? Most of the times, if I'm honest, I'm tempted to just sit on my, sit on my phone. Like, I, it's really hard for me to pay attention, especially um, since my colonoscopy. Uh, are you connecting or isolating? Because that, that's difficult. It's very easy to go to church and just kind of walk in, do the, do the whole church thing, and just walk out. Connecting is harder. You have to talk to people. You have to actually listen. Um, you have to really share from yourself, like ask for prayer and that kind of stuff. And then you have to, you know, serve people and get involved with the different services, and uh, not just the, the the services, but like the the outreaches and stuff. It's hard to connect. Um, another thing is serving or being served. You know, we all have this idea that, well, that church isn't feeding me. That's being served. You don't go to a church with the man- mindset of I want to be served. You go to the mindset of I, I want to serve. And uh, during worship, are you worshiping or thinking about other stuff? I'm the worship leader, and half the time, I'm thinking about all the things that I'm worried about. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things where it's like people think that like I'm really in, really with it all the time, and I'm always on top of my game just because I'm a good musician. But it's not true. Like I'm up there thinking about all the things that I have to do, all the things that have happened, all the things that could happen. I'm just like, ah. I'm trying to stay focused on what's going on, but I mean, it's it's hit or miss whether I'm actually, you know, there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's see what else. Does God have anything to do with your life? I mean, real life. You know, it's easy to say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I mean, does does He have anything to do with your life? When, when you're making a decision, does God factor in? When you're making purchases, does God factor in? When you're spending spending your time, does God factor in? Is God actually a part of your life, or do you just call yourself a Christian? Um. Is he the basis of your decisions? Which is what I just said. Uh, I'm going, uh, for instance, me, I'm going into a pastorate. And the reason behind that is to build wealth in heaven. I realized that my time is not very long and it is quickly going past. And even if I had 70 years, that doesn't mean that that's 70 years of, of pain-free existence. Like, you're, you know, you have all these health things that happen and stuff. 
So I realized that I have all these, you know, great, great possessions on earth. You know, I have a house, I have books, I have all kinds of stuff, but I don't have enough wealth in heaven. So, uh, you know, one of my driving reasons for, for, for going into a, a, a bigger ministry with more pain involved is because I know that with more pain comes more blessing, and with more blessing comes greater wealth in heaven. And uh, I, I'm getting to that age where I have to start thinking about the next life more so than the, than the current life and uh, what I'm le handing down to my children. I don't want to hand them down a house. I want to hand them down something that they can actually use. Um, and then lastly, uh, be a lifelong learner. If you want to move forward spiritually or, or really in any way whatsoever, mentally, physically, any way whatsoever, be a lifelong learner. Never feel like you know something. Always feel like you can learn something. It doesn't matter if, like, let's say, for instance, biking. I love biking. But I always go to biking with the idea I could always learn from something. Like, I, I can always, you know, go somewhere. I, I've been a musician for a long time. I can play better and guitar better than most people that I know. But I always have the idea that I can learn something from every single guitarist, even beginner guitarists. There's something, uh, I think, in their naivete that, that, that sometimes more uh, experienced musicians miss. So are you the same person? Some, some questions to ask yourself about being a lifelong learner. Are you the same person doing the same thing today as yesterday? That's called a rat. Are you pushing yourself to mature spiritually or is your life all about you? Um, I actually, I have a lot of different things that I do to help myself keep learning. I watch videos, I read books, I get around other people who um, can encourage my vision and encourage, you know, where I want to go and that kind of stuff. And um, then I try to be open with people and see what they have to say. 